the movie preview critic, informing and entertaining your movie world. What's up, good movie lovers? Welcome to a very special movie night. We're doing a little audio commentary on one of my favorite films and a little guest commentator here along with me. A very, very good friend, my best friend that I've known for many, many years since childhood. Too long. Too long. Known as Uncle Carmi. Carmen, also known as Uncle Carmi or Uncle C. Welcome. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Back Peace in out. Chicago, finally. What's up, internet? What's up, Internet? Shout out. Shouts. Yo, Internet. So we're taking a look at classic sci-fi and classic Arnie. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get to the chopper! Do it, I'm here! <laughs> what are you waiting for? Review my movie. Do the commentary. <laughs> You're right here. You have it on pause. Unpause Wait. it, please, and watch it. It's waiting to start. <laughs> my kids need to eat. Even though I'm the governor of California, the fourth largest economy in the world. It's a real crisis. Everyone who watched my movies get out of the crisis of California. <laughs> he did make a cameo in 2012, right? Was that a... Uh, did you see that in the, in the uh, preview? 2012? Yeah, where like they did you a shot that? of... Uh, like, wait, dude, wait, they wait, do wait, a shot that? and like there's a guy so, doing it, like an impersonation so of the, the governor. Mo- the movie preview critic is saying that you've watched 2012, the full thing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. No, no, I have not seen 2012. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, man. I, I apologize. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> we're going to be checking out Total Recall. I guess the reasoning is that um, it's one of our favorite movies. How many times would you say that? I mean, how many times have you seen it? Uh, it's got to be almost triple digits. Same here. I remember this came out, you know, at the end end of the 80s, the beginning of the 1990. Mm-hmm. And just love seeing it in the theater. And I've watched it over and over on TV, on horribly edited, censored TV and DVD since then. This has to be one of Arnold's greatest uh, quote movies, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just you have so much with the two, the two Arnolds, the two characters. Yeah. You go the, the, the Queen and the Hauser, and it's just you get so much interaction between the two. Oh, it's priceless. It's fantastic. All right, so so we're going to get it going. So the way a movie night works, if you haven't listened to it before, it's basically just a poor man's audio commentary. It's a fan commentary here where you have the movie ideally kind of queued up along with us, and we're going to say hit play and take it from there. And kind of throughout, we'll just mention here and there where we're at just to keep track. But ultimately, it's not really important that we're following along exactly in the same spot because we're going to go off on tangents, especially... With Uncle C in the house, we're going to be going off in many places. <laughs> so uh, we just kind of cover the whole Arnie phenomenon. I know it's pretty much over now, and we grew up in that generation where Arnold How's and it over. Well, there's really, I mean, is there really like an Arnold kind of figure in the movies nowadays? Well, wasn't that that movie with the the Rock where he he did that little quick cameo at the beginning of it to like. Like, I'm turning over it to you. Like, was it The Rundown, I think it was? Yeah, The Rundown with, uh, what, The Stifler was the in Stifler. that? Stifler, yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah, and cause, yeah, it was kind of like, like I'm he's in the beginning at the, the bottom. Yeah, yeah. But it's like... But he didn't come through it. Yeah, that lasted, like, what, two, oh, two movies? Tooth Fairy? Yeah. Here you go, here's a baton. <laughs> now he yeah. just took a big dump on it. I mean, at least Schwarzenegger waited like eight or nine movies before doing Kindergarten Cop. That's right. And but then we gotta forget him for Junior, though, right? He gets a free pass Junior. junior. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Love it. Of course, nowadays remake craziness is going on, so Total Recall has been targeted for remakeation. I can't you want to use that it. term? So that's, I mean, and that's the one we have to talk about is that this is such a just a tight movie in so many ways that why would you even you know think about remaking it? And there's no way that it can. Is be. Sam Worthington already signed up? I, lo- I love how he's like, I can't be the 3D IMAX guy. You know what? Stop doing those movies. It's very simple. Say no to Clash of the Titans. If you're an actor and your star is hot, right, you just got to say yes to every project because who knows. Take your Abada money and walk, dude. Go do some indie flicks. Yeah. Go yeah. do Greenberg too. Take some acting classes too. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's the same dude in every movie, isn't he? He's been in more than one movie. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they just photoshopped him in from all the other movies. <laughs> Little CGI just put his face over the head. <laughs> That'll probably be the future of movies, right? Like, oh, seriously. Just be... Like you're going to be a guy in the studio just... Reading the dictionary 
And then he's going to put it all together. <laughs> yeah, you just read each word. Seriously. It'll be like this, you know, when you call like whatever, a sprint. And it's so just like, talk. yeah. <laughs> okay, say if you want to talk to an operator, press zero. Or if you're here to call about your bill, <laughs> press four. Everything. And it's just one phrase yeah. at a time. <laughs> Seriously, like receiving his 12th posthumous uh, Oscar, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be. The, all these stars will be, live on in the infinity of the <laughs> exactly. CGI it's computer and stuff. Didn't they do that to like, uh, the guy who does Don uh, Pardo? Don Pardo? Yeah, yeah I don't think he's alive either, right? He's been for like 26 years, right? They keep doing his voice. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's been around since the beginning of SNL, right? Yeah. And he's still doing it. Or the computer version. The Skynet exactly. version of his voice is still doing it. Oh, man. Okay. We, his voice, I mean, it's technology, though. You we get, need actors. Like we got to get this going. We've been talking for 10 minutes already. And this is all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, now we're on part three of the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. all got, right. Seriously, this will be the first one we podcast. That's it. We got to stop. We got to podcast it instead of YouTube parts of yes. 11 minutes we'll because. Do, we will do podcasting. No. <laughs> Bring it exclusive. Exclusive. Movie preview critic. As of this point, we'll be podcasting. Podcasting will happen. Dropping Just got to figure out. It's a That's slow learning here. process. That's, That's why Uncle Carmi, not only is he a huge movie fan with an encyclopedic knowledge and a passion for film, but he also, he has he knows what he's doing, dude. He's plugged in. Yeah, I think so. He's uh, literally uh, Neo in the Matrix with the plug jedge jacking in. Uh, I move like they do. <laughs> All right. So we are, uh, right now we have the, uh, what is, what's this unicorn uh, logo? Tristar. Tristar. Are they even around anymore? No. Studios are condensing and merging. So, okay, TriStar. StoryCorp. StoryCorp, right? <laughs> nice, nice, StoryCorp. <laughs> All right, so the TriStar unicorn is running at us. So let's begin our journey on Total Recall. On our end, the sound is down, and we're just going to be subtitling it because we don't want to have any copyright issues. Uh, 17 seconds into the movie, if you want to keep so track of that. So just end the TriStar we're bringing up at... 23. Let's maybe talk about we're huge Total Recall fans. So what would you say for yourself d- draws you to this movie? What what's made it, you know, just kind of stick with you and not be one of those I, movies you I forget? I think the biggest thing for me is that like I didn't really get Total Recall as far as like the whole plot until just like recently. Like I watched it a million times. It's just like wait, like you're always just the first, you know, 10 times I watched it, I just want to watch the action and Schwarzenegger and you know, this is the real clear to do, you know, that stuff like that. But now it's like, wait a minute. Now I'm kind of like getting the whole thing of, so he really did have, he really was this guy, you know, instead of I'm this Quaid person, whereas it's, it's totally made up. Yeah, yeah. I yes. think that's like the biggest revelation. Like, like, wait a minute, he really did something. So there's that. He really was that guy. Yeah, and that would, that's like a great aspect of the film where, Okay, because we were, you know, 13, 14 when we were watching this the first time it came out. Mm-hmm. Just revealing our age there a little bit. <laughs> and, <laughs> don't do the math. Don't, don't do the math. <laughs> and, you know, okay, at that age, you know, we're, we're growing up on Stallone and Schwarzenegger and all the action movies. So we love to see those great action set pieces. Especially here, you've got Mars. You've got all the great effects and mm-hmm. action sequences are nonstop. This has to be one of the movies that is like virtually non-stop action pretty much i mean it's like action sequence literally every five or six minutes mm-hmm. and it's cool that later on you can go back and say wow even beyond the action there's a little bit there's of there's some a, cool plot line. again philip k dick with a short story for it so you have great stuff to work with you know not saying that people have it to turn his movies into shit or his short stories into shit yeah but yeah no it's definitely some stuff to work with and then this screenplay was written by Dan O'Bannon, who had written um, Alien. Oh, well, there, there, there you go. And I want to say Ron Suchet is also the co-writer of this film. So they had, ten years previous, they had written Alien, roughly ten years before that. Gotcha. So they had a strong sci-fi background. Paul Verhoeven was coming off of uh, Robocop, Robocop, right? And Robocop was 86, 87. I don't know what, if he did a movie in between that. Was it that? in 88, I think? Maybe. It was at 88, kind of. Right there. So this might have been his very next one or the one second after that. S- side note, Robocop was the first movie my mom recorded off of the uh, cable and then actually paused it during the bad parts. So, oh, and kind of did a little... <laughs> like the, the part where the guy gets toxified and he's like, you know, yeah. right, the right. Co- and he gets run over by the car. Yeah. That part was all cut out. That was, that was, that, that's like the hard work V-chip. Before the V-chip, <laughs> parents actually had to take time and work. Yes. And... 
make sure their kids weren't exposed to all this kind That's of stuff. That's right. Hey, uh, back to the movie here, 350. Uh, Arnold is just uh, starting to lose oxygen because his mask broke, and now the eyes are bugging out. Uh, awesome eye pop out, right? It's, yeah. That just gets you right in the Fangoria movie. Fangoria Magazine, remember that cover, dude? That's totally that right. Either. We were guilty of collecting Fangoria Magazine back in the day, and that was absolutely an issue where you're just like, wow. Yes. Totally want to get this. And he wakes up in bed with... Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone before Basic Instinct. That's so we right. have kind of a innocent, a purer Sharon Stone, if you will. <laughs> before the beaver. Before the beaver. Before... <laughs> pre, pre, PB. Pre-beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Should be AB and PB for Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Filmography. <laughs> <laughs> now see look at this look right here when she hugs him that's like a nice little look that's like a, that indicates that there really is a conspiracy like, oh yeah no right away if you don't you know obviously right now you don't really know much but she's already saying hey there's something else going on yeah like i hope he doesn't remember because i'm in right. place and i'm not really exactly. his wife and that's like you don't pick that stuff up to like the second or third viewing right if you're just watching it the first time Exactly. It's just like, great, this is cool. There right. might be some nudity knows, here, like, you know. What, you know, we blocked his his memories out. You know, every dream he could release something. Yeah. I love the line here. But I'm always back in the morning. That's right. <laughs> uh, I think we're li- literally going to be... <laughs> playful Arnold. And then the guns, dude. I mean, come on. Come on, come baby. On. You know I'll do good in my dreams. <laughs> like, the, the bulging muscles. <laughs> Dude, Arnold had a good run here. This is right Seriously, before... There's like three people in this scene. If you count Arnold's guns. <laughs> Ar- Arnold, Stone, and his bicep. <laughs> That's right. But again, just a great thing in terms of this film is that it works on so many levels where it hits on the action, it hits on just mm-hmm. a good solid story, but then there's also that other level where you have to go back and really appreciate all the film, right. all the work that went into this. And then again, you have... You know, this character of Quaid always loving the Mars stuff and always watching it. And he's watching the news clips and he's just like, you know, I can't even put, you know, I'm making my shake here, but I'm still watching it because there's something back there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a great, and again, nowadays, I mean, for me, it seems like a lot of big budget films, a lot of summer blockbusters, if you want to use that kind of term, just don't put in the work in terms of like a character who's going to go on some journey because they have something inside of them. Exactly. That's like pushing them. And even here, okay, it's Schwarzenegger. He's not the greatest actor. No. But in this film, I mean, you really you really get the sense that he has this kind of passion to go to Mars and... Right. I mean, yeah, we're only, what, how, how are we into it? We're six minutes into the movie and we're already like, okay, he's talking about, you know, he's thinking about this Mars thing. We had the Mars little flashback already and we want to get into it. Mm-hmm. Versus... All of these other movies of 12 minutes of nothingness. Yeah. To get to it. Yeah, and he's nonstop. He's like, Lloyd, let's do it. Right. Let's just go to Mars. Right. Just, th- just think about it. Come and on. Let's give Total Recall some credit. What's going on in the background? Flat screen TV. <laughs> this is like the total prediction of the technology exactly. to come. Which goes back to what you were saying with Philip K. Dick. Where he's just great writer, great source material. Perfect source material. And then here we have... But, but again, you know, giant mnemonic, right? That was him as well. So it's like, yeah, it was either was that him or was it William Gibson? Oh, it was William Gibson. But out. I mean, William Gibson's an awesome writer That's as true. well. But who? Uh, Philip K. Dick also did. What was the um, uh, Ben Affleck the movie? Watch what? Ben Affleck. <laughs> Payback. Paycheck. Paycheck. Payback or paycheck? Paycheck. 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 Yeah, paycheck. that was John Woo, right? Oh, Remember gosh. that that scene in that where like he's doing the the shot with the gun. Oh, and yeah. he's like, ah, and he's got... <laughs> That's a great freeze frame. He's like the worst expression ever. That's maybe something else we, you can shoot off. We'll do like uh, great, greatest freeze frame parts to watch in movies. That'd like be Catwoman like a... when the glass breaks before the guy shatters. Yeah, 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 a little, like little compilation video of that. We have great filmmakers here coming together with great source material to make a just an outstanding film. Where if you want to, John was pretty competent, but I don't know who wrote that. But it just didn't come together. You know, it was right. a decent idea, but it just didn't work as well as it should have. And ESPN. We're at the part with World ESPN, series, the World five. Series. Live from Tokyo. Oh, man. This movie knows the future. future. So the story's progressing here. We've got the establishing beaten sequence, kind of the opening little sequence here where, okay, he's obsessed with Mars. Exactly. 
We've established Lori's not happy about it. But again, right now we're missing more of that third character being his biceps, and that's why we have to go to the construction yard. Cut to construction exactly. yard. <laughs> but I think in his contract he's like, okay, my biceps must have <laughs> that's right. 5% uh, exposure in the movie. <laughs> Best supporting actor, these guns. <laughs> and this is kind of like the, also like the gratuitous, like, okay, let's show you what we think the future's right. going to be perfect way of showing technology you know and again what does every kid remember watching this the x-ray the x-ray machine yep here it goes right now he's walking through it and boom awesome and then you were just like amazed like oh i could see through him right there he's moving the dog everyone remembers the dog going through now in 90 this was a big deal oh yeah of course yeah so how do you feel now with like and this is so funny that what? TV's on a train? Exactly. That's never going to happen. <laughs> yep. How do you feel now? We're like, okay, you know, after this this recent CGI explosion where every movie's just so amazing. I mean, stuff like this in the in 1990 when you're watching this moment, you're like, "Wow, this is great." But now you're today you're watching Clash of the Titans or, you know, mm-hmm. pick your big pick, name pick your CGI of the week. Yeah, and it's like, "Okay, I'm bored of this, but it's amazing." But I think it's just Hollywood's getting desperate. You know, I mean, they just gotta, okay, we gotta stick with what works, we're just gonna go big, but, you know, if we have to spend big budget, that's fine, but we need to do the CGI. And, but again, you do CGI and green screen, you're saving money on locations. That's true, that's oh, true. back to guns. Uh, <laughs> here we go, Arnold, biceps. <laughs> Arnold's, Arnold's biceps, 10 minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> oh, and here we go, one of our favorite characters Harry. here. Harry! <laughs> you ever hear of... Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> you ever heard the recall? <laughs> With a set of fake memories. <laughs> Rico, 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 Rico. Maybe. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it. Come Neil on. got himself lobotomized. <laughs> Friend of mine, Neil got himself lobotomized. Oh, shit. This, this, I think this movie's kind of underappreciated again, with its lines. It's the same thing. Now, again, at the very end here, you get that little part, which is like right there, that little shot. Where he's like, okay, I got him. He's not going to do recall. Yeah. Do and he even looks back again. So it's those little things like, he's in on it too. Yeah, so they really are in on it because it's not from uh, his perspective, you know. Correct. So it's giving us the clue that, oh, okay, they're really... There's something else going on. Yeah, yeah. So then later when this happens, but you know, you don't catch it in the first viewing. You just, exactly. You're just like, okay, whatever. I don't know why he's looking at him like that, but yeah. there's no reason for us to think. Well, in the future, they still have huge AT type compute, uh, keyboards if anyone is... Well, that's right. Again, oh. now we have the change color, which ha- I don't think that's hit the market yet. Has it hit the market? The the pen that you just tap your nails and it changes, <laughs> and it changes the color. color. You have the whole palette there too. Yeah, but I that, I do think that might be kind of like a visual metaphor too for the movie. Like this is like the changing of the mind or whatever. Okay, now we're thinking too much. Into I know. It. Yeah, that's a little bit. I actually <laughs> never thought that before. Right now, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I gotta sound smart on this commentary. Let's just make something up. No. The nails are the color, and <laughs> oh, look at dude! The red or the blue pill, right? Isn't that from uh, the Matrix? So <laughs> That's right, I think they took it from it. Recall. But oh, but now she goes green. green. Uh, Bob McLean, love this. Here we go. Come on in. So we're here now. We're at our. If we're looking at kind of like a big structure of a movie, main character, opponent, objective, opposition, that kind of stuff. So he's about to receive, you know, in the Joseph Campbell thing, like the call to adventure here. Right. So this is like a causal event where he's going to be offered the opportunity for adventure. And yeah. it's up to him to make the decision to follow it. I said Mars. So, I mean, he's so obsessed with Mars in this. He's just like, I have, exactly. to, I have to go check out. And this guy is not in on it. Yeah. Because then we have the reveal a little bit. A little bit later on, that he's not doing the reveal. That's right. And of course, the future, everything is credits, right? Credits. <laughs> 899 credits. How much is that? Do you have a conversion rate? The conversion rate for credits? I think it's on the bo- side of the box on the Total Recall DVD. If anybody sees that, can you please comment what's the credit rate from dollars to credits in uh, uh, Total Recall? I want to know how many uh, dollars <laughs> I need to save so I can have my my trip to Mars. Oh, Venusville. There you go. See the whole Venusville. They're setting it up. They're just establishing <laughs> there all There it is. The... Come on. Don't bullshit me. Don't bullshit me. It's... <laughs> I mean, it's just literally every line Arnold says is a classic line. That's right. No matter the movie, everything. What about the guy you lobotomized? You get the (laughs) refund. And he's like, "Nah, you're talking ancient history. No way." Anyway, 
And at this point, Arnold's having a pretty solid run in his career at this point. He's right before this, Predator was like, what, 86, 87? Yeah, right this is 90. What was between Predator and this? Did you do Red Heat? Red was Heat? I think that was a little bit earlier. Because okay. I, I want to say it was like Running Man, then oh, Predator. T2 is after this. Correct. Was like 92. Well, but this is 90, so he also did Kindergarten Cop sometime at this point. So, oh, you've got your you've got your high technology phone. I'll be looking it up as okay. So as, as this is going on, click away, find it. Yeah. So in terms of a structure, this film is just it's such a brisk pace. And I remember reading an interview with uh, the writers, and they just talked about they literally wanted to write a movie where it was a nonstop action fest. And if you look at it today, it doesn't necessarily feel that way, but back then it was just it just mm-hmm. so high paced. We call it the ego trip. Great concept. So just awesome ideas. And that's why I think this movie works too, is that it just brings new ideas to the front. Now, here's the question. If he didn't get the ego trip, or he became a secret agent, would that have not unlocked his memories? Right. Or just tinkering with it, did it? I I would probably vote that it wouldn't have, because like the ego trip, it probably... It goes in to mess with the memory of who you are. But what does she say? We haven't implanted it yet. That's right. That's I'll look at you, nah. dude. Seriously, I've seen this movie about close to 100 times. I mean, <laughs> we're talking 20 years. So even if you watch it twice a year, what, that's 40? That would be like, dude, you're not, what are you doing with your time? You're watching Total Recall 10 times a year for 20 years? Five yeah. times a year? Yeah, five times a year for 20 years. And look at, look at this slick salesman. Isn't that worth... I love this cut right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the face, the green face, right there. And then he leans back, and we've Seriously, got the. That's just like. I... Now, see, this is the part that kind of gets you wondering if he's making it up because they show him the picture here. Right. Right. They so show it's Melina. Yeah, and it's like okay, they're showing him the picture, so how could they know exactly. that that exists? So now it's like okay, now the filmmakers and the storytellers are mm-hmm. are starting to mess with us. Like okay, so far with these little looks. And look at you. I'm right. Predator, Running Man, Red Heat, Twins, Total Recall. Wait, Red Heat was after 88. Predator? 88. Ah, oh, I mean, that just seems so, it seems so bad, you know? And then Julius Benedict, twins. Twins. <laughs> Hetero. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the best part of Total Tor- Recall. You never, it, there's no way you could ask Arnold Schwarzenegger, what's your sexual preference? <laughs> especially in 1990. Like, come on. Especially in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, here he's kind of falling asleep. We're at the part where there, she's asking he, he, him about what kind drugged. of woman. So, so he picks athletic. And that's like the personality, right? Isn't it? Demure, aggressive, sleazy. Be honest. Be honest. Sleazy. Sleazy. And so as he's falling asleep, the image of Melina comes on. Correct. So we can kind of buy that maybe it was like his dream, his half-asleep mind that put the I image up I don't there. understand that. And always that same little shot where she says forty one A Ernie and like it's like holding the like the breast in the hand. Uh huh. Like is that the side? Like I was like, what was what did that mean? Like, some... I understand that's her, but it's like Yeah. Why would they put the hand to the breast? I don't know. Well, like, we don't get the answer from the actual Total Recall commentary. Have you listened to it at all? No, I haven't. Okay, it's Paul Verhoeven, who's from Uh not US. Oh, right. <laughs> He's I, I don't know if he's... He's you not Czechoslovakian. Sub, do you have to subtitle him? Yeah, okay. So German, you've got Paul Verhoeven. German, isn't is he German? Maybe. I'll flip it up. Paul Verhoeven and Arnold Schwarzenegger on one commentary. <laughs> so it's like Arnold versus Arnold. So it's like, Paul, what did you want to do in the scene here? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> but if you listen to that commentary, here's Arnold's commentary. This scene was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, I remember this. The glass was breaking. You know, and it's just, it's not the most uh, in-depth kind of answer. So here we go. You blew my cover. You said, you know. Love it. Arnold starts freaking out. What's going on? Blew my cover. You can't do a simple goddamn double implant. Which double implant? Oh, there it is. We hit a memory cap. Yeah. So now we get the the little story revelation of, uh uh-oh, something more is going on here. They'll kill all of you. And there it is right there. My name is not Quaid. Yeah. And like, what? So you're just sitting there like, okay, you're drawn into the film because there's so many questions being asked. Exactly. A la J.J. Abrams Lost and all that, you know, <laughs> Alias, that kind of style, where the more questions the better because you're just going to be trying to figure out the answers on your own. Mm-hmm. 
And it's cool because even the trailer for this film, it does reveal a lot of the story, but it, it still leaves a lot of pieces unanswered. It does. And it leaves a lot of work up to you. Do you think today the stories aren't... Why aren't the stories today challenging us as much as they did back then? You really asking that question? Yeah. Come on, man. Just idiocracy. Idiocracy? Plain, plain and simple. Plain and simple? Yeah. Because <laughs> I would argue that blockbusters back then, back in the 80s, because let's say the blockbuster era really didn't start to like Star Wars-ish, somewhere in the late 70s. Jaws, all those kind of movies. Mm. 80s really kind of perfected it. 90s really honed the whole kind of process of marketing and big opening weekends and all that kind of stuff. So the films, I think, back then, even if they were the big summer movies, they really still took the time to put all these elements together. True. And it's like today, like you're saying, they're getting kind of lazy, right? It's just like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, whatever. We'll just... Because, well, yeah, we'll just put it out because it's still going to make money. We know. Yeah. We know every Harry Potter movie is going to do X amount of hours, so let's just keep pushing it out. You know... I don't even want to get into this. It gets, too, it gets me too fired up. That's why I'm a part of this uh, Facebook group, if you haven't joined yet, about uh, stopping the reboots, remakes, and sequels. One million movie fans That's right. tired of remakes, reboots, and sequels. That's right. But, I mean, we're not totally against that as long as they're done well. Right. I mean, I mean would you say... Go ahead. You wanted to say something? No, I was just going to say uh, Johnny Cab. Oh, Johnny Cab. A car that drives itself. Where is that? I need that, especially in, in the city. Yeah, and Johnny Cab, the guy who played Johnny Cab, is the coach from uh, Wonder Years, the gym oh, coach, the gym is? teacher. Yeah, okay. and also from Star Trek Voyager, he was the doctor. Oh, okay. The hologram oh, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, I gotcha. All right, and so now get ready for Total Recall to kick into super fast yes. mode because he's popped his cap, and now everyone in the conspiracy is after him. Yes, and Harry's back. The memory cap. What the fuck did I do wrong? <laughs> you, you have to understand, like, if, if we ever call wrong. each other, there's not a conversation that goes by where there's not some kind of Total Recall, or maybe like a Die Hard reference, yeah, like a yeah. Hans Gruber Die Hard quote. Right. <laughs> yes. And this is pretty bloody, this movie, from this point yeah. on. Like, so, so he says here, you, you, got your mix, you got yourself mixed up with it. Great. Bam. Bam. The... Ki- Dude, it's all about right here. Here we go. What? <laughs> <laughs> the chop to the nose. Seriously, like the chop to the head. Like, I mean, it was like, oh, and and, and then this this little neck break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this one here, reverse. Like you're already, I already got your nose bloodied. What? <laughs> and how? And now he's now it's a revelation of. Wait a minute. What did I just do? How did I do that? Why? You know, it's like. Yes. So it's almost like You're a, born, a badass in disguise. Like a born identity kind of thing. It is. Rip off. Rip off, born. And but I do like how he drops the gun even though he's got the fingerprints on there and it is the future. <laughs> but again, he's not thinking about it. No. Oh, holograms, they've got those now. I know because on CNN I saw Will I Am in hologram form. <laughs> have you seen that like a uh, what's that one blonde? You told me to watch something that Black Eyed Peas have done. Boom, boom, pow. Come on, dude. Dude. <laughs> That's another commentary. We're not going to talk about... All right. We're not going to get into the music Louise. industry? No. Not if we're talking about Black Eyed Peas. All right, so... Okay, so he comes back to the apartment. Uh, he's all scared about it. Turns off the lights. And, of course, because maybe at this point, if you're watching it for the first time, you don't know she's in on it. But she is. And she's trying to say, no, don't worry about it. So you want to recall. So now she's saying they got a plan with secret agent. So she's got the strong point of view where she is working on two levels. If you're directing her, and in terms of just thinking of the story, she's got to play up I'm a concerned wife, but also that other level of here I am a planted agent looking right. over you. That's right. So it's working on both levels. That's true. Oh, uh, what he did he just said the line. <laughs> Do you think this is an illusion? (laughs) I love she's the... uh, Paul Verhoeven is Dutch. He's Dutch, okay. 
Yeah, he did a uh, like another Paul Verhoeven that is German. That's okay, but this one is Dutch. Dutch. And per- Paul Verhoeven would go on to do Starship Troopers. After this, I think like two or three years later. Yes, nineteen ninety-seven. Oh, okay, so, so seven, seven years, later. years later. RoboCop, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, Showgirls. Wow. Starship, Hollow Man, Hollow Man. Kevin Bacon, <laughs> right? Lolly, go get out. Let's get back to the movie. Stop talking about <laughs> Hollow Man. Well, but Paul Verhoeven, you know, you can knock him for Basic Instinct and Showgirls. Showgirls more than Basic Instinct, but. I mean, the guy knows how to do action. Robocop, Total Recall, and I'll give him uh, Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers, you know, yeah. it has that, it has that kind of satire on the whole militarism and Nazi kind of stuff. That movie is super bloody, so he just kind of That's pushes true. it. That's true. I mean, I don't think he's working that often. So now today. we're back at the apartment. It looks like uh, Laurie, the character, is starting to whip Arnold's ass. A kick in the nuts, she, right? There's like a couple that. kicks in the nuts in this she, movie. She's in it. Yeah, there's definitely some nut shots in this movie. Oh, the knife. And the classic line. Why are you doing this? Oh, the slice. Yeah, yeah. Slice. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love how, okay, if she's a train agent, all he just gets the gun, talk now. Exactly. <laughs> talk. And she just talk. spills it. That's your wife. Yeah, that's it. And just watching this, you're just like, okay, wow, this is great. It seems like she's revealing so much, but it's just the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to learn of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And just just for me, you know, just thinking that there's going to be a remake of this, hearing that there's going to be a remake, it's just, you get this horrible feeling in your stomach like, how are they ever going to make it better than this? You know, what can they do? I mean, they could make some better special effects. Right. Okay, like, granted. It's just like, are you going to do the same, the same, exactly the same move? I just don't... We're getting to that point. Yeah. Like, you know, we're making The Karate Kid. I mean, I can't believe you're making that. Yeah. That's like just a great movie to grow up with, to watch. The kids can watch it and everything. And now we're going to do it with Jackie Chan. Yeah. And Little Will Smith. Right. Give me a break, man. I can't. Can't, can't handle it, it, right? Can't do it. Can't do it. And, you know, I'm all for, like, if a movie had a great idea... But maybe it was limited by the times, you know, the technology wasn't there Mm -hmm. to make it happen 100%. Or somehow, you know, it just wasn't explored well enough. I can buy a remake. I mean, the original Scarface is a classic, but then the 80s version kind of talked to that whole cocaine generation and just a little bit of the politics and the bigger world picture. And, you know, it was a little bit over the top with Al Pacino, but it's it's a pretty solid movie and Pacino really you know makes it in that one I'm a big fan of the blob you saw the blob the remake remember with the, it wasn't Kevin Dillon or Matt Dillon in that is that the the blob the original one would come out the movie theaters and the, oh they redid it there's like the pipe scene with the purple yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. there was like the blob in like 88 or something all that one. but then there was a blob from the 50s with Steve McQueen before he came to see McQueen right and you know that 50s movie is just like kind of like a B movie Right, but then the '80s version, even though it was like a horror movie, that again you, they're not pouring millions of dollars into it and bringing the biggest stars to make it, or the highest talent caliber of talent, it explored in a new way. It was pretty interesting. Or David Cronenberg's The Fly was always Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis. That was mm-hmm. a good one. Yeah, I guess that was a good. One. So for a remake or a reboot, you know, I guess you could. I'm a big fan of the Batman reboot. I mean. Kind of, you know, it's, I know, I don't think you are, right? You're not a fan of Batman Begins. I didn't like the Begins. Yeah. Dark Knight was decent just for Heath, I guess. But Yeah. But, I mean, the Tim Burton Batman's solid. I like the first one. And uh, I like a little bit of the third one. Yeah. Wait, the third one forever? Yeah. But not Returns? No, with uh, DeVito. Yeah, DeVito and Pfeiffer? Uh-uh. Gotcha. Like so it kind of all depends. So, I mean... I, we're not knocking the idea of that, but what's the motivation for Hollywood to even consider that stuff nowadays? Cause well, it's... there's no more original ideas is what it comes down to. Yeah. We're out, you know, nobody else is doing anything. And, but, I mean, we're getting to that point of, I mean, we got to think of years and years and years of writing. And it's just time that, like, has everything been done? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you think, like, I don't want to start going on the music rant, but, I mean, you think about every note in existence... Right. At this point, hasn't every combination been created? <laughs> That's an so idea, think yeah. About it, it's like just logic and ones and zeros, right? You know, it's just it's just notes. Yeah. So hasn't every single 
combination been hit. Right, right. Love the sequence here, right? We go back to the X-ray machine. That's correct. That we introduce, and now we're using it, in, and love this just jump through. Exactly. The, the jump through is great. We see how what happens when you have a gun. It goes red. Jump through. Cool. And today this would seem, you know, so kind of an average action sequence, yeah. but it's just, it's just so cool. Some great action going through the subway here. And the music's just pumping, and we've introduced a Richter, right? <laughs> We'll save we'll yeah. save we'll save the penultimate Richter line for later, but that's true. But it, we we meet a really solid uh, villain, right? A solid bad guy who's Richter just Richter is is a classic, and he's got kind of like this personal motivation because the line's going to come up later, right? Where he's with uh, because of Lori, yeah, yeah, because Quaid has been sleeping with Richter's wife because she's also an agent, so he's right. got this personal vendetta against him. Oh, classic moment. What's going on here, the human buddy? Sh- dude, the human shield. <laughs> I think this is probably one of the first times I've seen in a movie of a totally innocent bystander <laughs> getting torn apart, man. <laughs> oh, there it is. He takes one shot, and then he just, blah, 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 three more shots. That guy's my new hero. Human <laughs> shield. Actually, I think I'm, I'm going to give it away to the internet. That's going to be my Halloween costume. <laughs> You're going to be total. I love that he just throws them right here. It's going to be the human shield. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you supposed to be, little boy? <laughs> oh, I'm the human shield from Total Recall. Don't you remember me on the escalator? I took 17 shots, but I saved Arnold Schwarzenegger's life. <laughs> Oh they should gosh. cut you a check when at the door for that. <laughs> and I love the, how the window, he just swings the gun and the whole frame of the window breaks. <laughs> that's it, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's like one little, he like tinks it. Tink, tink, tink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like the metal bar falls off. <laughs> so a little kind of a convenience oh, thing going on here. Of course. But I, just the glass again. Now, I want to say that, didn't this movie hold the record? Did you hear this stat at all that... Um, Die Hard had held the record for most glass broken in a movie Correct. until this came around. Right, because of the, the whole, uh, when the, the he does the reactor at the end, right? yeah. and all the glass And all the Martian. From, yeah. But it's just here, it just starts where you get all this glass. And I love how now, when he's watching the TV on the, on the uh, subway, that the advertisement's not for a recall, but for the real vacation. That's right, that's right. Where it's like, oh, you know, don't settle for fake implants. Yep. And then here we have the, the line... I wouldn't want a guy like Quaid Pork and my wife. Oh, yeah, that's right. They have a little thing there. You're saying she liked it? <laughs> no, I'm saying she didn't have any of them. Oh, and then we have the De- the DeLorean cars are now back in the style. <laughs> and yeah. Ron- Ronnie Cox. The future Cox. definitely meant you had to open a door from the top- bottom to the top. <laughs> it's like, how can we do things different? That's right. We've got uh, the bad guy from uh, RoboCop here. Yes. Good old Ronnie Cox. That's <laughs> Playing with... Mr. Cohagen. That's right. I want him back back in place with Lori. And then, oh, here you go. Just sunspots. So there's there's some cheesy moments here. Mm-hmm. But again, it's, it's that pace is just nonstop. Even though it's it looks like it's stopping just to kind of get some information here. Mm-hmm. It's still that tension's building. And now we get the sense that, okay, Richter's boss is Cohagen. And we both of them on screen, we know kind of the hierarchy... And Cohagen has his solid motivation where you you do the work like Lost does the work with the character development. <laughs> Cohagen has a motivation to control Mars, to control the Trebinium. <laughs> See, Trebinium's better than Unobtainium, right? At least they did some work with... Uh, oh, that's, with I mean, it doesn't even sound like you can grab it. It's Unobtainium. I'll never be able to get it. Can't touch Obtainium. <laughs> So now we've got the Hotel Ritz, uh, Quaid's going there. I love the zooming in thing here. That's enhance, enhance. And you could say that that's foreshadowing uh, the uh, OnStar systems and all that. And You could. Total Recall. If you want to go to find out where all the technology of today came, Total Recall. Yeah, total Recall. I think there's an iPhone somewhere in here <laughs> at some point. I think so. Well, the video phone. We've got the video phone here. And so now we have a little... If you want to live, don't hang up, which, again, we go back to the great Terminator lines. Mm Mm-hmm. Look at that. I don't think I realized that until you said that. Really? That that's kind of like a Terminator. (laughs) I always thought this guy looked like Michael Landon. A little bit. A little bit. I'm calling Highway to Heaven, Bonanza. (laughs) Wepper. But so now, this means that as soon as Richter hung up on Cohagen, he put this guy in motion to get him the suitcase. So is, is that believable? I mean, we're talking like literally five minutes. 
In five minutes, he's able to do that. You can do whatever you want, man. So that kind of might lead to the idea of like, okay, this is kind of made up. And then I like the uh, the headdress here. Mm-hmm. What was I doing on Mars? You do a, you do a much better. Wait a minute, don't you, so you're saying Kohei gets hit this guy? Yeah, because remember at the end when he's got Molina and him tied up, and oh, he's yeah, like, the briefcase. And he starts listing all the things that he helped him do. He's like, I'm surprised they came together. Richter going off on his own, and you popping your cap oh, yeah, early, and right. all that. See again, this movie's ridiculous. It's just yeah, there's so many levels. Seriously, Mission Impossible One or Total Recall, which one has more plot twists? <laughs> right, right. Oh, oh, love this Excuse me, but I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you can have an old lady swearing, you gotta yes. appreciate that in a film. And he just bows. I actually saw this on Sci Fi Channel the other day, and they just cut to him grabbing it and then bowing. They just cut oh, really? out the whole. Yeah. Didn't even bleep it? Whatever happened to bleep it? But, well, back when we were growing up on TV, they just had him do the bad. PG words over the swearing, right? Like no, it was fudge. bleeping, and then it went into the dubbing. Oh, the dubbing? Yeah, bleeping was always first, though. I always remember Ferris Bueller. Oh, uh, here's one of one of the favorite scenes of the movie when he gets into the Johnny Cab. Drive. Oh yeah. Shit. Shit. <laughs> Just go Just anywhere. Go. <laughs> That's a problem when it, when you're watching an Arnold movie. Like you just start doing all the dialogue. <laughs> I think the best was that was when we went to the movies to go see Time Cop. Uh huh. And then we went out to eat afterwards, and all we did was sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and we we're like, "Why are we talking like Schwarzenegger?" I know it was Van Damme. Because we can't talk Van Damme. <laughs> right at thirty-seven minutes, right here, uh, Arnold's in the Johnny Cab taking over manual with the joystick. Michael Ironside or Richter is shooting at him, and now we're going into the tunnel to get the great. Great dialogue of Arnold and Arnold this on is, screen. This is probably, I think, my favorite part of the movie right here. Oh, this is this is great. <laughs> <laughs> like, if so, if you tell the Johnny Cab, I'm not gonna pay. Sue me. I go into the mode of kill. <laughs> Autopilot. I need to drive over the passenger that I just let out, and like then a, then auto detonate. The programmers at Johnny Cab are like, whoever doesn't pay the fare gets run over. <laughs> okay, if anyone says sue me, dickhead, I'm gonna run you over automatically. Like Johnny Cab got offended. He got mad. Oh. It doesn't make any sense, but it's a good visual. So good. Oh, I love the rats here. Yes. And here, awesome, awesome moment. And this is what's so cool is that when you have something that's original and creative, and you're not relying on things that have come before or to reference things or to do any kind of homage to something, you have that freedom to just go somewhere fresh and new and to have courage and all that. And this, so, you've never seen anything like this before. No. I mean, I really haven't seen it done since too much, thankfully, but... I mean, this movie just keeps brimming and brimming with so many new set pieces and yeah. visuals. Yeah. And of course, now the watch where it's, oh, and right there, boom, you're like, this is the coolest movie ever. Yeah. There's an Arnold right there. I'm shooting at him. He's not, but wait a minute, it's me. And then the little move, the gun movement, the little bit of the blip right there. Mm-hmm. Killer. Love it, yeah. And it just... You know, earlier, okay, they introduced the x-ray machine. That's gone, so let's just introduce the next thing that's going to be interesting. It just, it doesn't stop with the excitement for the creativity and just just trying to wow us that it has. And there you go, and now you see his face in the briefcase. So we're thinking, like, what? (laughs) Howdy, stranger. This is Hauser. (laughs) If things are going wrong, I'm talking to myself, and you got the red (laughs) hour. No shit. (laughs) Get ready for the big surprise. You... You. Are not you. You are me. <laughs> no shit. No shit. <laughs> and we cut to... So we're cutting... I love this too. We're always cutting back to Richter in the car to keep that That's tension right. of like the opponents always in motion. Now they have the explosion from the Johnny Cab. And so that, I think that, you know, it made no sense, but it's like, how are we going to justify Richter showing up? How are we going to get Richter in there? Johnny Cab's got to explode. <laughs> Set Johnny Cab to kill. <laughs> Johnny Cab, fair not paid. Let's destroy thirty thousand dollar cab for a four dollar fare. <laughs> oh my god! No credits. Get it right. It's credits. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you messed up, dude. 
I'm not. I'm not edit futuristic that enough. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> that will be edited out. <laughs> Here it is. Now it's all up to you. <laughs> oh. So here we go. Uh, Ironside is pulling up. Just everyone arrives, and again, it's just the pace is just so quick now. It's awesome. Yep. And uh, just to maybe even get a, a structural kind of sense with like beaten sequence, I talk about this all the time. I'll start mentioning these moments here, kind of when one sequence ends and the other begins. But here's here's another amazing part that you've never seen before this, and it's cringeworthy. <laughs> the self guiding nose. Remover of bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Just shove real hard. <laughs> Once but, you hit the crunch, you're there. <laughs> but be careful. That's my head That's too. That's my head too. That's right. But and this is another unbelievable part because there's no way he's gonna right. be pulling. But this another thing great out. part here is, as you see, it's now you know the animatronics here. But it's that new. It's this. You've never seen animatronics like this, mm-hmm. where that it's that robotic. Or the rubber, but it still works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's moments like, let's say in the Terminator, in the first one, when he's like fixing his eye, like you could totally tell that's fake. Yes. When they cut back. But yeah. here they've kind of advanced they've, enough they've where it, f- it feels real enough. Yeah. And just that cool idea that there's been a bug in his head the whole time. That's true. No, they're great, great. Yep. <laughs> Which. You get your ass to Mars. <laughs> Flash the Blue Blaker ID at the front. Of- I mean, this is, it's just like two. <laughs> it's like, what if you said, P.S., Rise of the Machines. <laughs> See you in, in 12 years. <laughs> Even though we haven't made the second one yet. That's right. <laughs> I mean, seriously, his career was just like skyrocketing. T2 would be next after this. Yeah. Awesome. And it's just so cool that it just ends on that Get You Asked Tomorrow's. And it's a nice way for now the opponents to know that, okay, this is where he's heading. Mm-hmm. While at the same time, it gives us a nice classic line we can always reference. And he gives it to the rats, and the rats are going to keep these guys occupied. And it seems like it's going to slow down after this, but no, we're going to cut to Mars and there's going to be another quick action sequence. <laughs> Coming up with one of our favorite, uh, the one of the biggest overdubs since uh, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll that in just a second. To Mars, yeah. yeah. So this is the end of one sequence here, where after right. this, we're going to cut to Mars. That's a, that's a new beat, a new kind of... So this is like the end of Act 1, would you say? Uh, yeah, because we've ast- where we are right now, we're like 43 minutes in. 43. So, I mean, in screenplay structure, they always say like 30 minutes is the beginning of Act 2, the end of Act 1. But, you know, you can really say that, okay, as long as we got a main character pursuing an objective with someone who's going you know, trying to stop him, and he's got someone to talk to, someone to kind of reveal his emotions to, he kind of does, kind of doesn't. He had his wife, then he had himself now, and he'll have Benny for the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, these, you know, you don't have to be locked in this kind of structure. It can always change, and you, you know, it's just like music or whatever. You can kind of... M- Free from Yeah, just form. kind of, like, a, I don't know, clay. You can kind of mold it to what you need, but as long as the dramatic effect always takes place, and it, it does that here. So, he kind of had, like, this objective of escaping, but really, I would say, yeah, that... The act two really starts now because he's on Mars. So nicely, nicely mm-hmm. pointed out there, right? And in the movie theater at this point, you're like, okay, why are they showing this? You know, where's where's right. Quaid, right? Yep. I love this here. So we have a lady with a big yellow coat. It's like the only person with this color. Yeah, exactly. On. Yeah, that that wide shot. It's like that's the only one there. Everyone else is gray and blue, kind of, <laughs> and she's just. You know, standing out. So that's a visual cue there. <laughs> now, this guy in the beret, who, the orange beret, he actually was a Cardassian on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a little nerd factor coming out for you there. <laughs> it's okay. That was that was my favorite race. So you you, you like the Cardassians? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Interesting. <laughs> See, now it's interesting that Quato is recently starting to get popular, right? SNL did a thing with Quato. Well, SNL's done a couple sketches where, you know. Uh, if you're not familiar with SNL, watching the sketches, which most people haven't watched it in the last couple of years, because it's not really funny most of the time. But uh, Andy Samberg does a quado where sometimes, most of the time, it's Bill Hader, I believe, that uh, passes out, and then Andy Samberg comes out as quado <laughs> inside, and he always, you know, he always makes a joke about he has bad breath and can I get a smint and funny jokes like that. But it's pretty funny. 
And they had one with Scarlett Johansson where she was also the Quado. The Quado. So it's like two Quados together. And every human is called Quaid. Exactly. Right? Yeah. What's up, Quaids? Okay. Which one of you Quaids going to give you a smith? <laughs> Here it is. Here's the overdub. That's right. Richter, Michael Iron said. <laughs> Quaid. That's Quaid. Where? The woman. Get him. Her. Yeah. Like, no, I think he, like, he wanted to say attack or something like that. Yeah. I, you can't, I, I can't really tell what he's exactly saying, but if you do like a quick, like, just rewind that part. Or track back to it's it. Like, it's like, get him. Yeah. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Get him. Her. And just the her doesn't match up. And it's and totally... Then, here we go again to the special effects. That's Because look, you see that thing come out, yeah. right? So you're just like, what is that? Exactly. Lo- and, then, and then another fake. Fake head still, under it's it. Still, it's getting there, man. It looks looks good for practical, real. Uh, we, and we got a great one-liner here. <laughs> I love how all the guys are just like, stupefied. And then why would this head say this? Surprise! (laughs) It's like, that makes no sense for the head to talk like that. (laughs) The head knows it's going to explode. (laughs) Oh, oh. And then here we go. So now the glass breaking. So which definitely leads to other foreshadowing of... There's other parts where we can't do this. Mm Mm-hmm. So to sound... what happens when the glass breaks. Yeah. So now you know your consequences. So at the same time, while... It like it makes sense within the action of the moment. We're also setting up the whole logistics of everything. That's right. There's always, this is the uh, Star Trek red shirt guy, right? There's <laughs> exactly. The, someone. Everyone, one person has to fly out, no matter what. <laughs> I do like these moments in movies where, like, I've always kind of wanted to do this, where like I'm holding on and like just there's kind of like <laughs> the vacuum go. going on, and you're you, you know like whether it's like you're you're hanging out of a plane and you're just holding on for life or wherever, just <laughs> just to kind of feel this, you know. And I wish this guy. I'm going to hit the button and save the world. And I wonder why all the doors don't lock at the same time. Oh, and the other part where they're trying to get out? Yeah, because right now, look, like all the doors are closed, but oh, Oh, okay. Except this one. (laughs) This one. And he could just Indiana Jones it out of there. (laughs) They're all connected. They're all connected. Everyone's tense in this movie. Finally, a calm down moment, right? That's right. This guy on the uh, train with him here, he isn't, he isn't in T2, is he? Is he one of those biker guys? He's got, like, the beard. Well, that is. That is. The, give, give me your clothes and your boots and your motorcycle, isn't it? Is that him? Or is he the one that says, no, he doesn't say, I can't t- let you take the man's wheels. I don't know. He looks very familiar. Like, he's been in some other kind of... Maybe he was in Running Man. I don't know. They're all kind of blending together. But there's also another shadowing, foreshadowing of the mountain. That's right. The Mars Mountain. And that's those, that looks like what? Like a kind of miniature? Yeah, miniatures, definitely. So you really got to appreciate that before the CGI age. This re- It really does a oh, great job of... I mean, you know, you go back to Star Wars for the miniatures. I mean, Phil Tippett and those Tauntauns, dude. Yeah. Phenomenal. I mean, I, like everyone said, you know, I'll take those originals over the... Exactly. And that's why, again, Clash of the Titans just came out. I don't want to see it. Because the puppetry of the miniatures and the clay... You know, the claymation stuff in the original. Uh, it's just, it's great. You yeah. Know, yes, it's a cheesy movie, but it's still, you got to appreciate the time into the stop motion. You know, and now it's just like, oh, let me just click, 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 click. Boom, mm-hmm. it's done, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, because all the, all the, the only time is the rendering on the computer side. And I like this part here with Kohagen where he, the first time we meet him, he explains his whole, what's at stake. <laughs> it's like... You know why I love my job? Here's why I care so much. <laughs> so there's no um, mystery to us of like why is he doing, you know, what's motivating. And we get kind of like a recap of the story so far. Because I wonder if I, if the filmmakers were like, man, people are going to be confused with this movie. <laughs> I don't pay you to think. <laughs> That's right. I'll give you rough information, I think. Here's some information so you know what's going on. <laughs> don't give up. I know this movie's treating you like you have smart brain think. <laughs> Just this movie, you know, again, I, I always keep mentioning Lost in all my reviews, but someone at work was saying that Lost is like one of the few shows that doesn't, it makes us go to its level. Mm-hmm. It requires from us that we try to understand it. Right. Instead of like, okay, you know, there's like kind of this saying that movies, movies at least are made for like, it. yeah, like fifth grade level. Mm-hmm. That if you make it for like a fifth grade level, which would be what, 10, year, right. 10 years old? Well, when you have all these squeakles running around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always got to get a punch into the chipmunks. That's right. Now, listen, every kid's <laughs> Is that Howie Mandel right there? 
That kind of does look like Howie Mandel. <laughs> no, it's you, if you're wondering what part, that's uh, Quay just got off the, uh, the train. F- 50 minutes and about 35 seconds. Look for the Howie, Howie Mandel Howie line. Howie Mandel on the left. <laughs> and here we meet one of our favorite characters. Maybe one of your favorite characters. You don't like him? <laughs> Benny? Benny, uh, dude, come on. I got five kids to feed. I got, I got five kids to feed, yeah. And I like how each you know each character is their own person. They, they have a unique enough personality. They all have their motivations. Even Benny, you know, he keeps saying, "I got five kids to feed." Yeah. So it's it's just you know, it's just something that drives. I think he just said that so many times because so it remembered it, and then down the road when he changed it, he's flashing the Bubeka ID. Bubeka ID, the fun test, the Hilton. So now we are paying off the earlier setup from the. What was that? The laptop? Well, that was like that was like, kind of like a poor man's laptop, yeah. right? It was almost like a video or something like that. The last resort. For a good time, ask for Melina. And then it's like, I love how this, this is the best part where he's like, "Could I borrow your pen, please?" Because I think this is the same writing. <laughs> I think I wrote this, and he and he did. Wait a minute. So just a nice little clue. And that's great. It's like a nice visual way to communicate that. You don't it, have to say it. it, it for uh, people doing the bugs, if you notice, the pen he grabs has the red cap, but he writes in black. Ooh, look at you. I didn't notice that. It looked like it was going to be a red sharpie, and I thought, like, oh, it's going to be written red, but it's, no, it's in black. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. Yeah. Making a movie's tough. you got to keep track of all that that's stuff. Right. <laughs> Damn you, Benny. And look, because it's Total Recall, we have to have an explosion. <laughs> Seriously, like, he just got he just got the Blue Bank ID, and now it's like now we got explosions and gunfire, <laughs> not just explosions. And the Mars Today box takes a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's really this movie just tries to keep you on edge. Exactly. But I guess it was kind of set up because there's like the chaos going on on Mars with Quato and all that. Right, so right. Again, which you know we had the reports very at the very beginning at the news reports. So we know where it is. Yeah. So this script is just... You know this script it has been gone over so many times that... You know, it's kind of like... A, it's a web. You know, it's a spider's web where you kind of push on one part and it pulls on the other part. Mm-hmm. So it's all connected. So you can kind of go through the script and say, okay, how do I set up this Mars conflict? We've got the news report in the beginning. We've got the co at press conference. And mm-hmm. now it kind of pays off here with this first explosion. The rebels are fighting and all this. And... It's great. You know, it's just really... The work has gone into it, you know? Definitely. I like the mutant setup here. Right. And it's like every time we meet someone, we get like a little exposition. But, you know, it's on the move. It feels like we're moving towards the... Was that a Jack in the Box sign back there? Jack Jack in the Box on (laughs) Mars? I missed it. It is, look! Oh, yeah, it is Jack in the Box. And Sharper Image? Sharper Image. (laughs) <laughs> There's a future that didn't pan out. Exactly. Where were you on that one, dickhead? <laughs> hey, Total Recall, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you didn't know, Sharper. We're just going to go out of business. This movie sucks. It needs to be remade now. <laughs> Seriously. It'll be remade with like a last a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> hot topic for Forever 21. <laughs> Seriously, I can't wait to comment. Hey, I love Hot Topic. Don't be ragging on that store. Not I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hats. <laughs> They're back. Oh, here we go. Oh, one of the best. Gratuitous. When you're listen, when you're 13, this has got to be like. <laughs> I never thought of that. I don't know, man. They don't. They don't. You've seen one. You've seen them both. I guess you've seen all three at this point. All three. I guess from a guy's point of view, it's just like, oh, that's more work. You know, do I really need that? <laughs> Just an extra thing to get in the way, I guess. Look at the credits. The money is red. That's it's right. not. It's not green. Well, that's that's why he looked at it all weird when he pulled out the briefcase. He's like, "What's up with like this purplish reddish money?" Mm-hmm. And then oh, Melina. Because on Mars, would they would they take credits? Would it be? I mean, on, is it Mars? Mars money credits or is it? It's credits. Uh, or oh, I don't know. I don't know. See, we need that too. Love this setup here, and so we've got Molina now. So. If you're watching this for the third or fourth time, you're like, okay, so she was on the TV, so does this mean Quaid is in his mind still? Or it was just kind of from his point of view? Because we did kind of see it as he was closing his eyes, but then they also did a shot from, like, the side. (laughs) What have you been feeding this thing? (laughs) You know, 
And it seems like they're kind of made just for these one-liners, but it, it, it works. I mean, it just it feels like it's natural dialogue. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> That's just such a line, but it, we accept it. We love it. <laughs> and these mutant looks, mutants look interesting. That's right. So I think, what, this is 90s. So Next Generation was on the air for a couple of years here. Right. And Deep Space Nine was about to to happen like in 93 so the whole star trek kind of which one was that deep sleep nine deep I <laughs> never heard of a deep sleep nine i liked it i liked it <laughs> you trekkie dude i know i i, I didn't was so much and rowan a little bit at the end at the end of that um, you come back? i don't know i don't know 100 percent. here we go melina and quaid having their their emotional fight. And again, it's good that characters care about each other. And Melina has a backstory with Quaid. And it's coming out here through conflict. But it's not Quaid. It's Hauser. It's Hauser. That's right. So this movie finally takes a moment to breathe again. So it's like every... Right. We'll get back to the plot line of, I don't have my memory of you. I don't know what's going on. I need help. I think Arnold's playing it really well. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm Douglas Quaid. And she plays it well here too. Really like this. So that's So we get an emotional level. I mean, why not have let just because it's a sci-fi story with a lot of great visuals, a lot of awesome action, don't forget about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, she isn't my wife. <laughs> and like one comment gets just taken out of context and yeah. leads <laughs> to a Facebook. big argument. <laughs> right, right. Uh oh, because you're still working for. So there are another levels added right there. Exactly. Great close up. Good lighting. So the filmmaking works here. Yep, yeah, definitely. You know, ideally, all movies are just drama at the very base and then any genre on top of that. Right. So Recall doesn't forget that. <laughs> Put away Cohagen for good. That's right. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> the gun always talks. That was kind of an anticlimactic. Uh... No. Ooh. And of course, now Benny with the comic relief. You made me wish I had three hands. Great line. And <laughs> you're doing fine with just two. Another great line. So we're an hour into the movie. Uh, we're right. We're, we're six seconds short. Five. And we are now at the one hour point. And so we get the man who later we'll find out he has Quato. He is the Quato holder. <laughs> and we right. cut back to the storyline here going on with Cohagen. That is true. Talking about the whole, the whole Martian revolution and all that. Yep. So there's this full world that's being developed outside that continuously is moving forward. You know, if you're writing any kind of script, it's like, Okay, we're watching Quaid right now. So what is Richter doing? Right. What is his wife? What is Laurie doing? What is Cohagen doing? So right. everyone else is still going on while we're they're off screen. Yep. And here we have a we really have a great, great, a good, another one that will twist around your mind. With the man from Recall, supposedly. Because he was in the commercial, right? That's right. Yeah. But you couldn't float the bill. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And this isn't it. This is like one of those actors that he's been in so many things, but you don't necessarily remember every movie that he's in. Yeah. But I just, I just love this because it totally just mind, mind fucks you, right? Exactly, it does. It just adds that whole level that it, you know, because at this point when you're watching it, you don't necessarily believe that he's having a dream that he's back at Recall, and then when this is introduced, it's like, wow, everything that he's saying. It, Right, it could kind of work. It, it it totally makes sense, and the the coolest part. I remember watching this the first couple times, and as he's trying to seduce Quaid, 
Like, I'm believing it. I'm like, Quay, why don't you take it, man? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's in an emergency. That's a great, that's a great line. All the pieces come together. Yep. You, you paid to be a secret agent. Bullshit. <laughs> Sleazy and demure. But again, yeah, she was set up in the opening dream. That's right. right. just so cool I, you you just have to pay attention to it you know mm-hmm. so this is really like in terms of like a screenplay structure this is the middle of the movie the midpoint right definitely and so usually at a midpoint something happens in terms of the character's uh, pursuit of objective that kind of Strengthens the resolve that makes it focused. I'm here at recall. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sharon Stone doesn't have a lot of lines, I guess, when you look at it now, but does a really great job. But Verhoeven tapped her for the basic instinct. Basic instinct changed her life. That's right. Bullshit. Dude, he said bullshit again. Two That's bullshits in this scene. Two bullshit just here. <laughs> Well, there's a really an invincible secret agent from Mars who's the victim of an interplanetary conspiracy to make him think he's a lonely construction worker. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's just it. And then too, because now after he's gonna decide not to go with the advice, it the wall blows out, right? Exactly. And it just seems like that's like his mind. Now, on the commentary with Verhoeven, he says that at the end, the reason he fades to white is because for him, Quaid got lobotomized. Oh, I gotcha. Because he's like, normally films fade to black. Right, right. So I wanted to do it with white, and that would symbolize that, you know, he's really back at recall and this was all a dream. Right. Again, Matrix ripping it off. Exactly. Red and blue pill. Take the red pill. But like, after I listened to that commentary, I watched this again. And just like you're saying, those looks and everything, it just makes too much sense that before he gets his memory popped and before he goes to recall, that it already exists. You know, it seems real. This actor is just delivering these lines so well. I know. It's just like, if you kill me, you'll be in permanent psychosis. <laughs> One minute you'll be the same rebel cause. <laughs> right after that, you'll be the going against prison body. <laughs> He's just getting so excited. Know, yeah, it's so good. You'll be lobotomized. Get a grip, Doug. He's convinced him. He's convinced us. Until. It's like, I should do it. But no, I don't see. I don't know if I believe this because. So does that mean. In a dream, you don't sweat? What's the. He shouldn't be sweating, though, because he would be at recall, right? Yeah. So why would he be sweating? Just the drip of sweat. That's right. There it is. Gotcha. This is a pretty blatant shot. Look at this yeah. headshot. Whoa. <laughs> the slow mo. And the eyes. And he spits it back on him. <laughs> now you've done it. The wall block. Was that the code word? Were they listening to her? If it doesn't go to plan, say now you've That's done it. true. That was a deleted scene, I think. <laughs> so now we're back to the action again. Exactly. Arnold versus t- ten guys. Sharon Stone kicking the face. And now in the upcoming scene with another Mo- nut shot. Yeah. What's what is that? That's the third, fourth nut shot that yeah, he's gotten. That Cuff him. So now, the other thing would be, how does Molina know to come at this moment with the gun? I don't know. Because that, now that could lead you to the side where, okay, maybe it is a dream. That in the dream, he's made up, okay, Molina would come and rescue me. That's true. 
So it's, it seems a little bit too perfect. But I think in Mars, you always have to be packing anyway. Okay. She, I mean, you got to think. She's, you know, right there with the Rebel Resistance. Yeah. So she would she would just do it anyways. I always be packing if I was if I knew if I knew Quado. I'd be packing. <laughs> just the spray of guns, everyone goes down. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be packing that hardcore. <laughs> just, just having it out right there in the elevator. And does every gun have like uh, explosive tip bullets? Because I mean, <laughs> in Verhoeven's world, yeah. I mean, come on, look at Robocop. That's right. It's every hit. I mean, the blood just spurts. Come on, Peter Weller had that little hand. Just, you just hold it in and it just spray everything. Yeah, yeah. And it had like explosion up the side, dude. Yeah, that might be the legacy of uh, what was that western, The Wild Bunch, the Sam Peck and Paul oh, right. like that had that Mighty Python made fun of later. <laughs> Product placement. Yeah, not too much of it, but uh, again, Total Recall but, sign of thing. But we had both. We had uh, Barks root beer, which is Coke, and we had Pepsi in there. Ooh, so we had actually had both. So they didn't discriminate. Here we go. Great line here. He's got the gun on Sharon Stone. Be careful. She's got the gun behind her. And we're married. Here we go. <laughs> Consider the laws. <laughs> it's just, it's too perfect. No, because I mean, this era is gone, isn't it? I mean, what kind of movies do you see nowadays where characters are just spouting these one these one liners nonstop? One liners are gone. It, the age of the one one liners is over. It is. It, now, is it a good thing or it just was kind of a it thing? Just, it is what it is. I it is what it is. Because before this, you had movies that, I don't know, the Western or whatever. You had the lines here and there. Right. But 80s and 90s, or mid-80s to early 90s, it was just nonstop. Dirty Harry, you know, had yeah. his, you so feel lucky punk. the plot, Molina says Quata wants, Quata wants to see you. But, again, why was she packing that hardcore coming out of the elevator? Yeah. Maybe she knew that, you know. Well, you might think that he's going to be on the run. He's still on the run. They're after him. The resistance maybe has the eyes and ears everywhere. That's true. And it, it seemed that when Quaid went into the bar, they knew who he was, so they would probably have kept an eye on him. And also, this part we have Michael Ironside, Richter seeing his wife dead, and now we have you know the, the fueling the hatred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great that that the opponent has an emotional reaction. It's not just like, okay, like, I'm just oh, I have some, to kill him. Yeah. And this guy's smart enough to know, okay, I can't shoot because we know what's going to happen. And why is he smart? Because he has glasses. He's <laughs> the, that's, that's the a, sign. An e, always movie rule. If you have glasses, You're you are smart. the nerd techie guy. That's right. At least back at this time. <laughs> Thing. That's interesting. Has there been recently a heroic type character who has glasses on? Dude, look through the times of history, dude. Sunglasses. That's different. What if those they're are, prescription? Though? Look at those. Are ner- those are straight up nerd. Those, those are Coke bottle glasses. The last person to wear that was like Louis Skolnick. <laughs> Google.com. Uh, <laughs> Louis Skolnick. How do you spell that? <laughs> See, this is another convenient thing here. So now it's like, okay, is the conspiracy that Cohagen's behind so organized that it's Benny perfectly everything. picks him up? Or is this Quaid's imagination where, oh, Benny would show up again? That's true. So it'll get you thinking in both directions. Glass breaking. I guess all characters can do that. Yes. So we have this action beaten sequence here that really started with the scene when Quaid shoots the doctor. Yes. And from here, all the That's scenes that have been happening much. are part of this one exactly. sequence. So it's just that kind of idea yes. of when you're pursuing an objective and any kind of event or decision and action that's taken that creates a series of scenes from it. Mm-hmm. So this would not exist if Quaid didn't shoot the doctor. There you go. So now... Oh. And I like that, you know, for Richter, the bullets are a way to symbolize... <laughs> he pulls out the... It's like this crazy automatic shotgun. <laughs> I mean, that's a crazy barrel right there. Yeah, that is. And... It's like, last time I saw that was like Modern Warfare 2, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like Saving Private Ryan on the tanks. <laughs> like for... What are those, like the 
what's the caliber on those? <laughs> I don't even know. But, you know, for Richter, the gun, the bullets are just like a representation of his anger, right? You know, so it's always more powerful if someone's firing a gun that they represent something that's within the character. They're not just doing it to do it to be slick and cool. That's they're true. doing it because they're motivated. Yep. Tony, I, yeah, I love this. They I just love like, how his name is Tony, too. It's like the most freakish looking mutant <laughs> in the history of time. Yeah, it's Tony. Well, like, he wanted to be called, like, Zolfar. Exactly. <laughs> Zoltar, go. That's right. Xanther. <laughs> Hurry up. It's got to be a Z, right? Yes. Z equals alien. That's right. <laughs> Z does equal alien. <laughs> or X. Z or X. It could be X, yeah. <laughs> and look at this. It's like a checkerboard. Or a chessboard. <laughs> Another level of symbolism. <laughs> Richter's cold. Not even. Yeah, seriously, this is hardcore. Where that's ooh. Triple D gets killed. <laughs> or three D, three D. Tony, um, fight! Tony gets shot. But remember, Tony gets shot because. But he's, since he's still a big actor, he gets shot in the proverbial spot that is always okay, which is the left upper part of somebody, the shoulder area. Yes. Here we go, there dude. We go. Uh, Got the glasses, dude. Another great action sequence. Hard with that knife, man. It's like how many action sequences here? (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) that is a great shot. Like, when have you seen that in a movie? (laughs) Seriously, how many short people shooting guns? Short person prostitute, nonetheless, on Mars, (laughs) on Mars with an Uzi. Venusville with the Uzi. Memorable. She took out like three dudes. Yeah, memorable images left and right. I always like that scene when he jumped out the window, like when he just does the dive. <laughs> That's like another thing. Like they should have like a theme park where you can be like Total Recall the Ride. Yeah, Total Recall the Ride or action movie theme park, and you can like reenact your favorite action moves that you can do. Seriously. It's like dive. <laughs> How long could you hold your breath with no atmosphere? <laughs> yeah, That's gonna get yanked like two seconds. <laughs> Fatality after it's like the third. in the tunnel of love indubitably. You're the carnival, you know, like four tickets, you know. <laughs> Jump off the building for Come six. Come on, Benny! <laughs> Come on. on! Do it, Benny! <laughs> Cohagen's pulling everybody out. Uh-oh, what's this mean? Come up with my favorite line, dude. Choo, 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 Give these people air! <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. I think this is my favorite line in the whole movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's just like he's fighting for the little guy right there. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go up probably for me at that. It's like the uh You think this is the real Quaid? Yeah, that is good. Cool. Cool. I do like it when you watch the movie in Spanish though, and it says Yo soy <laughs> And this, look, this has all been silent, and it's awesome because you know what it's what's at stake for these people. Exactly. And it, it's just a you great... You don't need to do any dialogue because... That's least. something that you would imagine in a drama. You know, it's just... As soon as that fan stops, there's no dialogue and everyone's reacting and you know what's coming to them. No. And here we get some cool history of Mars. You know, the movie keeps delving in, keeps delivering, you know, on this depth that it has. Yep. Koei is just a bad guy. I think my grandpa might be here. <laughs> Comic relief, always. Yeah, Man, you yeah. Know. But you know, I'm you... the comedy sidekick, <laughs> so I got to deliver the lines. And what happens to every comedy sidekick? They get whacked out. <laughs> they get whacked out. Oh, we have some romance developing. Oh, okay. I'm actually surprised that the that the kiss didn't get broken up. That's what usually happens, but there's no reason for that to occur. Quado's waiting. So now we have the next action or the next beat and sequence about to happen where you have the oh another awesome moment here where Benny takes the glove off and he's the he's the mutant. So now you believe him more. You believe that he's going to be on their side. There's no reason to s- suspect that he's working for Cohagen. 
even though everyone we've met that has been with Quaid has eventually turned against him, which leads you to believe, okay, is this just part of the program, part of his built built or part of the memory that he purchased, or is this actually going on? Exactly. Cool revelation here. I like the the base. Right, because he's got to be good because he's a mutant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you wouldn't do that to us. And now we get the stakes. <laughs> We get the stakes that the air has been cut off, even though we understood it. But now Tony, Xanthar. <laughs> Did I say Xanthar? Is that what I called him? Yeah, that's it. Xanthar. <laughs> I think like if you just want an alien name, just look at the prescription drugs nowadays. <laughs> Seriously, get him Cialis. C- C- Planet Cialis, home of Prozac right. and Xanax. And Claritin. Lipitor. <laughs> Lipitor. That would be like the evil boss. <laughs> that, that is the evil boss. <laughs> Lipitor. Nobody could defeat Lipitor. <laughs> From the depths of Hades. <laughs> Lipitor. He lives on Mountain Viagra. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, awesome and, scene here. And, yeah, here we go. This is one of the big creme de creme scenes. Uh, hour and 18 minutes the, in. The, the, the quad reveal. Chapter 18, if you're watching on DVD. And we've just been if told... If you're not watching on DVD, what else? Well, I guess you could have Blu-ray. I actually have the VHS copy of this still. The widescreen VHS? Widescreen VHS. I bought I it at Suncoast. I still have it as well. Suncoast Video. Yes, um, I think it was Suncoast. That's right. Those days. But I, ha- I have it on Blu-ray as well. Oh, you do? Yes. And it looks amazing? Come on, man. It's, it's best... Blu-ray. It's the best quality. It's Blu-ray, of course. Come on. That's right. Oh, here we go. It's Quado time. It's like, what is he doing? Taking a leak or... <laughs> I know. It's like, at first you're like, is he going to transform into Quado? What like, a cool shot right there. Just the side the view hand. and you see the hand come out. And there it is. Quado. <laughs> just so, so just out there and just awesome. Love but also, when you see him, first thing I think of is Chucky from Child's Play. I agree. Yeah. That's totally... Wanna play? Exactly. <laughs> Charles Lee Ray. <laughs> yeah, Quato just... Read me a story, Quaid. <laughs> and it's cool because... Now, at this point, the guy who who is the Quato human... The host... Is that is that an animatronic guy right now? Yes. Okay, and it's cool because like you can tell that the consciousness has gone from his head in the quad. I think it depends on some shots. So let's see if we can get a tall shot. This is just, I mean, it's so just that texture, that quality, because this would be CGI nowadays, right? And I mean, here you can see the hair follicles and the just yeah, the light and the sweat. I mean, it just really just feels real. It. Yeah, they greased him up. They. Gre- Quato's been sweating under the jet, the shirt there. <laughs> I love this the the zoom in here on the forehead into the mind. That's right. Really great filmmaking and nice swoop over here. Yeah, great shots here. It's probably miniatures here too. Yeah. Star Wars the uh, effects that in a lot of ways have a better effect on us. The pyramid mines. Exactly. Which have been established earlier. Right. From the dude in the subway, right? The subway on or the train. The train right. and also at recall with the picture. That's right. And there was something in the news reporters, wasn't there? Some I kind of thing was. maybe? So it's already been hinted at and, and any time I think Molina's talked about it. Molina talked about it. And now we now we learn that Richter and Cohagen know about this. Now the only thing is that if Quaid or Hauser was there, wouldn't you see it from his perspective instead of just like some floating memory? Wouldn't he be there walking with them? <laughs> Very possible. Or is there some kind of thing with just the disembodied? Yeah. I mean, this is a lot more interesting visually than than if he was just walking around. You were seeing it from his point of view. Of course. And then we see the big payoff. Now, again, this movie's doing a great job of setting up. Like, what is this hand device? That's right. The reactor. Yeah. Yeah, and then the one thing you got to think though is like, okay, so. The Martians created this, but they didn't start it because it's like, what? Because they were waiting for Arnold Schwarzenegger, dude. They were waiting. Arnold the Brown Schwager. The Brown Schwager. <laughs> He'll show up. 
<laughs> Wake up. I just don't understand how the aliens already knew about the shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Total Recall, there's another thing. Total Recall foresaw the shocker. Everything of the 2000s can be found in Total Recall. I totally want to see that again because that is the, the Martian shocker. It doesn't look like it's very pleasurable, though. <laughs> or so I've heard. It looks overly ribbed. <laughs> no, but it's always ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> the Martian shocker. Oh, that is. I've never thought of that. That's hilarious. Okay, so uh, Quado has told Quay to open his mind, start the reactor. We have the. Richter and his cronies breaking through the wall with that thing we've seen like four, five times already, that driller. Yeah. Breaking through, blowing up, they found the base, taking everybody down. Awesome action. So we have the beginning of a new beaten sequence, yeah. where the previous one was really no action. It's they arrive at the base, and we have basically two or three scenes, and we get kind of some backstory, but also just the hint of what it all means. Yep. And now a new sequence starts with the action. That's right. And now we have Benny turning. And they kill Quado. And Benny takes out Quado. And, and that's why I hate him though so much. Yeah. Because he kills Quado. Because I like Quado. Yeah. Quado. Even though he looks like Chucky. Even though he looks like, he looks like he's inside a dude. <laughs> Chucky trapped inside a guy. <laughs> oh, I got four kids to feed. There's a reveal there. <laughs> What's the line? <laughs> you got me. I ain't, I ain't even, even married. married. There we go. That's the line. Oh, well, because because in the nineties you have to be married to have kids. Is that how that's works? the nineties. I ain't even the, married. See, total recall foresaw that <laughs> you didn't have to be married. That nowadays. civilization is just going down the tubes. So I do think in the future we'll ha- we'll have kids that just grow out of our stomachs and never leave. <laughs> we'll start <laughs> having quad. Start start the reactor. Uh, dude, that, that headshot's brutal right yeah. there. Be my like behind next to the um Get Your Ass to Mars laptop moment. This is probably like my second favorite like sit down and dialogue sequence. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> the, who is it now, my mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have someone you care about. It's gonna talk to you. And it's great that Cohagen he maybe has like five scenes in this movie. Not well, up to this point. He's not in it a lot. And now he just gets this juicy, mm-hmm. great scene where we can really reveal his personality. He is pretty he is pretty cliche, like, beyond just, like, wanting control. You never understand anything emotionally about him. But it works. It works just fine. Mm-hmm. And again, all you know, all these characters... So, and now we have the super twist of how Hauser wanted to be Quaid. Yeah. It's the only way to fool the psychics. Mm-hmm. Which, that's a great motivation, that there were really? psychics and they could always sniff them out. Right. So, just create a new personality, and the cap got blown, or, you know, mm-hmm. that his, he got released early, but they managed to make it work anyways. And here again is another, okay, audience, you've stuck with us, let's do another mm-hmm. recap of what's been going on. Yeah, too perfect. <laughs> that, that, I like that. Too perfect. And here we go. Spent a year planning. Mm-hmm. I'm amazed it worked. <laughs> Love that line. Great moment here. And this, yeah, yeah. just <laughs> watching <it> this. <laughs> so what's that to us? My mother? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'll <Aldi> Quaid. <laughs> if you're listening to this, it means Quado's dead and you have letters to him. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> but hey. What the fuck? <laughs> that's my body. What is mm. it? I want it back. Exactly. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you see, it's my body you got there. And I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> Indian givers. <laughs> what? I don't even remember that's that line. Racist. Oh, there you go. Adios, amigo. I like how Cohen is next to him. Yes. So they plan that. They're like, let's do this. Hey, maybe we'll meet in our jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's good because it's like Schwarzenegger can be the bad, like he's not really, you know, obviously Terminator, but it's like he's the hero, but he also can be the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what makes it so great. That there's, yeah, the personality inside of him that's yes. not a nice guy. Yep. And we're back to the chair, and we're back to the chair again. Exactly. 
Another great idea. But this is like the hardcore chair, dude. Yeah. With the... And we're coming up on the big jugular shot, which we're all waiting for. The jugular. There's so much in this scene. Yeah, that's the true. The and the... I don't know, is that some kind of probe or something off the... It the almost heart? looks like an IV, kind of like, you know, like a metallic thing that holds the IV at the hospital. That's a great one up the nose. It's like the pole, yeah. It's just so ruthless. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's the hit to the jugular, it's so violent. So, you know, we can really appreciate this on that level of action and just yep. enjoying it. It's just, it's just a fun, over-the-top... He's got a big house in a Mercedes because that's all you need in the nineties. A big house, in a big Mercedes. house in Mercedes. So it talks, it addresses the materialism of the times. <laughs> that's right. Citizen Kane, Casablanca, <laughs> Godfather, Total Recall. In the chronicles of cinema, four movies have shaped our lives. <laughs> If if like if an alien race discovered this movie, they could understand us. They, they would, <laughs> here's what shaped. What are you talking about? If they found this in Mission Impossible, they would think we're just non nonstop convoluted assholes. <laughs> That's right. Why are their movies so complicated? <laughs> I don't get it. Just tell a straightforward a story. What's your so deal? Red light and green light. What? What? <laughs> Take the pill. The Matrix. This. This was the most advanced race oh, ever. Star lines. Give these people air. <laughs> Come on, Cohagen. Give these people air. You got what you wanted. <laughs> Look, give these people air. It's I love this. so. Could you imagine if anyone other than Schwarzenegger was in this role? That's the whole thing. It's like you're gonna remake it. Oh, I, I don't see anybody else in that chair, dude. That that's a pissed off look right there. That's a that's a yeah, very angry that, look. He is just an, a movie, an action movie star, and there are there. Everyone's too fey. Everyone's too femme these days, dude. Yeah. What am I gonna have? Jude Law. Yeah. Give me a break. The Metro. Everyone's too metrosexual. Exactly. exactly. So, I mean, what? You can have, like, Jason Statham in this role? No. No? Not good enough. Not not big enough. Not big enough? Isn't he, like, 5'7"? I mean, Schwarzenegger's, like, 5'6 no, or he's, something? He's, he's, he's big. Guns, baby. Well, the biceps are, like, 3'4". Right. You know? He missed, missed the universe. Here we go. Here it again, comes. The biceps ripping off. The braces. And just, the, the, like, this, <laughs> this is the weakest guy. He doesn't need to do this to him. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the blood. The super jug. <laughs> super jug. <laughs> oh, what about my super jug? <laughs> the face the face Seriously, smash. He already has, he's, he still only has one good, uh, that thing. He has like yeah. an IV. I love that the scientists, <laughs> I love the scientists are just like ripping out the axes and everything. Like, what are you doing? There you graduated is. from, yeah. you graduated from MIT, dude. You're not going to be able to do anything like that. Relax. Why would I grab an axe? <laughs> It's just all bloody. He's still you? <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. And then he grabs the axe. That's the best part. I was always waiting for that twist where Melina would have been at the end. She's like, <laughs> I love how this guy just gets it in the gut, dude. With the axe. Hurt <laughs> <laughs> But they would be alive still. Like, they wouldn't lose consciousness so quickly. Like, it's just axe to the stomach. Oh, I'm knocked out. She would but still... there's like no blood on that one either, which I don't like about that. It's like every other scene's bloody. <laughs> I take an axe to the gut. <laughs> Not one blood drop. You know that was like the uh, last shot of the movie, and like Verhoeven's like, we need the blood. Uh, dude, we're all out. Uh, the jugular. <laughs> jugular did us in, dude. <laughs> the jugular was like the wall in Evil Dead 2. <laughs> or the elevator in Shining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, he's like, this is my Shining moment. <laughs> But it's from a person. Now, this is kind of a cool thing where Cohagen's really upset. And <laughs> he kills the fish. And we get Faith this. Faith No More. <laughs> Faith No More. Faith No More, the real thing video, which came out the Ep- next epic. year. Epic. Or epic? Yeah. Oh, that, on the album, the real I mean, thing. Uh, right. Again, Total Recall telling us what's going to happen in the future. So, influencing, influencing Seriously. that band. But I like that moment because Cohagen reveals that he cares about Quaid. Right. Or cares about Hauser. Mm hmm. So and then really, really, he wanted Hauser back. Yeah, it affects him that he's got to make the call. Okay, just kill him. You know, we can't, we're, it's not going to work to and get so him back. So this whole character that's been created is now taking over Hauser. Right. So it just really 
really great moment. You don't see that a lot with um, with kind of villains. I don't I don't like to use the term villain, but just opponents, people, because villain yeah. is like you know the whisker guy tying the girl to the track. So, <laughs> I mean, hopefully this is like a real Kicks person. Is a bad guy? Wouldn't you say a bad guy? But I mean, like the conflict. Good guy. Yeah, I guess it's just you know, it's yeah, terminology, no, whatever. We all know what it is. Yep. Because our, our favorite bad, one of our favorite bad guys is uh, Hans Gruber. Of course. One of the most sophisticated, just really different. Oh, here we go. We've seen these things Low the whole movie. Very slick. <laughs> I've seen the fake yes, ideas again, in my time. Now we have the driller. Now we have the final revolution of the driller. So the, the drills have been kind of set up throughout the time here on Mars, and we get to see one where... Right. And I love how it just eats his shoulder hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Benny's the name. And now we now we know Benny's driving it. Where he's a little... he could barely drive a taxi, so how's he driving this? Yeah, yeah. He's a little too enthusiastic yeah. on this. And then we turn on the driller. Because if you go to his motivation, is he just like he's a little bit thin? I mean, Richter's a little bit better. Yeah. Because now that we know he doesn't have any kids, it's like okay, what is he caring about? What's his deal? <laughs> and why does he hate him so much? Yeah. So okay. it's a little bit weak in that area. But it sure is a fun way that Benny gets knocked off here. Yeah, classic. I'm coming, I'm coming for, you. for you, baby. <laughs> the she shoulder's gets, just she getting... gets ripped up in the shoulder. And, now he, and then he got torn up in the shoulder. But then he brushed it through. Dude, even this, uh, this mining drill has like the jugular shot with the oil all over exactly. the place. In Verhoeven's <laughs> universe, nothing is safe. Life is a series of jugular shots. <laughs> Here we go. Great Wait line. Wait a minute. Didn't Robocop kill the guy in the jugular at the end with the blade? I think you're I think you're Because didn't right. he have like when he was all like and he just had the little blade and he You're got right, him in the yeah, jugular. and he had him, yeah. Uh huh. Robo so that was like Verhoven the jugular dude. Verhoven's now we, now we gotta do a separate audio commentary. We got all the jugular shots. All the Verhoven. Screw you Benny, screw you. And they just the drills just <laughs> like, dripping just not, blood. Seriously. All, uh, the drill took all the rest of the corn syrup, guys. <laughs> can't do any more axe shot. We can't. We can't give it to those two guys coming off the elevator. With axe the blood. Axe. And this is kind of too perfect that he makes the hole, and now they're in the mines. <laughs> to this exact same miniature screen. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, here's the perfect spot. So you can kind of be like, well, okay, if he is in the dream, but he knew still, it was had to go. Yeah, he had to get there somehow. Yeah. It's just a little too perfect, but we we can go with it. We'll take it. So now we've just ended one sequence now. We, I mean, we're only, we only got like 15 minutes left. Mm-hmm. Hour and 35 minutes into the movie. It's one big reactor. Koigen knows it makes air. But the <laughs> bastard won't turn it on. If Mars has atmosphere, he lose control. <laughs> so you could say that Total Recall foreshadowed the green movement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Because... Cohagen and the Trebinium is like the oil, you know. And even though we have the ability for electric cars and stuff and all that, so we need to the whole hold life on. of Al Gore was based on Total Recall. <laughs> Inconvenient truth <laughs> comes from Total Recall. It's true. It's true. Oh, uh, here we go. So here's your favorite. My favorite moment of the movie. With the the super watch. <laughs> so because of course you set up the hologram watch. Is that the time mix? Doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is a real Rolex? <laughs> and again, it's like, how how would he know this is the perfect moment to put this on? But okay, we'll buy it. Because we have to show something new. Yeah. We can't just gun down everybody. And this is just like any, like James Bond, where like Q's testing everything. And yeah. you know later on Bond's got to use it. Exactly. So you can't introduce that cool thing to us and be like, never. Exactly. Here we go, and this all. And when I think of the Matrix, I think of this scene too, where him and Trinity go through and start blowing everyone out. Yeah, at the bottom of that, like in the office building mm-hmm. at the end. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, but again, why aren't these guys shooting each other? All they're all in a circle. And not right. until he has to take off the. Because remember, doesn't he take it off and they shoot themselves at the one the little part coming up right here? So if they're all shooting down, okay, because it was like they're. I like the future. It's like, oh, we'll just put on red uh, Ray-Bans and we're... 
do it. <laughs> Seriously, like, what's a better laugh? This one or uh, De Niro in Cape Fear? <laughs> in the movie theater. <laughs> and then she's like, I just, knock, knock. Just sprays everyone. <laughs> just everyone falls. It's just so blatant. And she comes to the party yeah. late. He's got a hologram. He's got a hologram. Just, so yeah, just super wiping out everybody. So I mean, I, I think we're so we really should, we should play that part, the music from Propeller Heads, just to go with the Matrix. <laughs> I mean, we're really enjoying this whole the action aspect of this. So, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> you think this is the real kid? It is. Yo soy. <laughs> great, love it. Yeah. But no, while like, all this great action is going on, it's there's still an awesome story developing. Mm-hmm. Coming to this conclusion, and we're waiting to reveal the mystery of what's going to happen. Right. Well, I think all mysteries are done now. Now it's kind of just like, are they going to have the reactor happen? I think though, right here is the problem is that they, like, there's like no sh- no shot, uh, there's no cut in that shot, so like almost Verhoeven messed with us mm. to say, hey. You don't know where the hologram is anymore. Like, what's real? What's the hologram? Okay. Because nice. she grabs the watch, she goes over, and then she just turns off, and it's the hologram. Yeah, yeah. Nicely said. So now we have the great battle of Richter mm-hmm. versus Quaid going up the elevator, which has been set up, and tension has been building through the exactly. whole movie. Sharon Stone's dead. His wife. He's obviously pissed. He has a leather jacket on. Uh huh. He has a leather jacket on. <laughs> So, of course, he's bad. And, you know, this is... And part of me is like, listen, dude, this guy against Arnold Schwarzenegger? Come on. Yeah. I could believe, oh, you know. Oh, here we go. Here Here's we go. the... So now he's hanging off by his two limbs, which one of them is broken, I think. Yeah, that's true. And he's he trying to drag him me. with. And, oh, uh, super blood. Here we go. Exactly. And we hold it, and we have the sever of both appendages. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And the great line. See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> See you at the party, Richter. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's a close second for the, my favorite line in the movie. That's yeah, so that, funny. That is a great one, too. And then we had a nice wide shot of the just the scope of how big that's everything right. is. And now it's like everything, like he's beaten everyone. All he has to do is get to the reactor. Everything's good. And now there's one final, just like a video game. Just exactly. there's the one final boss that exactly. he has to get past. Like Game of Death. He's on the last level. Mm-hmm. He's got the real. Let's see the Marsh <laughs> the shocker. The Martian, Martian shocker. shocker, dude. <laughs> oh, I will never. You just ruined Total Recall for me. <laughs> I can never watch it again. I can never look at this with a straight face again. And then we have, of course, the final conflict of Cohagen. So I, I guess there is a little bit of justification that he's afraid that it. You don't really know what will happen. You know, that if you turn it on, maybe it might destroy the planet. You know, maybe it's, he's not just being greedy. But I think either way, he thinks that if that if it screws up the planet, or if it gives him air, he's still out money. Either way. Yeah. He's, he's lost control. Right. Yeah. And that's just, that's a fine motivation. I mean, not I guess you don't need for every character to learn about their childhood or something like that. Exactly. He just, the guy just wants to hold on to power. We know right. that he's capable of caring about someone. He cared about Hauser. And in this diatribe, he's saying he he just wants Quaid back, or he wants Hauser back. Yeah, you had to be Quaid. You're no, you're nobody. You're a stupid dream. Yeah, because he is really mad. Yeah, and that's just a nice little philosophical angle. You're yep. just a dream. Is life a dream? What's real? What's reality? Oh. What's reality and what's fake? Throw nice the, shot. Throw here. the bomb. <laughs> And I guess that shatters something because we get the vacuum effect happening exactly. again. Exactly. Telling you, I want this to be a ride at a theme park. The <laughs> hold on to something while it gets sucked out. <laughs> that that okay, we'll make it into a, a ride. <laughs> this would be the funnest Why don't you thing. Just go to like Vegas and go in like those like things where you do the free falling. Okay, like the air, like the yeah, air thing, like the skydiving That'd inside cool. the whole thing. But that's more like floating. It's not like you know danger lurks ahead. <laughs> you want thing. danger? I want danger. I want the risks. Oh, Cohagen, just like that. Cohagen goes going on a water ride of death. 
And now you had the setup in the dream with the eyes popping. Exactly. So we're going to get the huge payoff with the cover of Fangoria magazine. Yes. I think I know the issue number of this. Busted. Fangoria number 90. I think, I think you might be correct. Fangoria issue 90 has the Cohagen on the cover on dude, Mars. Dude, if that's right. With his face. You pulled it, dude. I want to say it. Somehow if, you are an, You are an owner of a rare issue 9. No, I, I think I... I don't know if I have issue 9. The rarest Fangoria issue, issue nine with Motel Hell on the cover. Oh, dude! Then that's what happens when you do the Martian Shocker. When the Martian Shocker starts, everything's reactor. everything's. Start... <laughs> Is that the line that you get like from your date? It's like start the reactor, <laughs> Martian Shocker. <laughs> start the reactor. <laughs> We've just ruined Total Recall's line now. <laughs> So now he's gonna. Now he just got sucked to the same spot Cohagen got to. So what's gonna happen? Look at that heat up. That's always that's a yeah. cool image. Look at that. Cohagen, man. I that's pop, rough. I pop. That's rough. Because yeah, the eyes actually come out pretty damn good in this one. Yeah. Because I think in that Fangoria and, they showed how. Oh, there it, it is. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> and they actually showed like the half kind of torso yeah. and like the mechanics under it. Yep. Of course, though. You can't buy... Okay, so let's get this. They're on the surface right now. Yeah. And the effect of the eye popping is happening. Yes. At the same time as the reactor is just starting to melt everything. Correct. By the time the atmosphere is totally fixed... <laughs> everything is Just in time to save them. So this movie's saying that... It's definitely suspension of disbelief. But also you have to think... They're right at the epicenter of where it's all starting. That's true. So that so I mean, right, right there, that's there. oxygen, right? Yeah, coming out of the mountain. Yeah. So I mean, that's starting the whole counterbalance. Right. So maybe they're getting the initial dose. Exactly. So now that can kind of speak to the idea of okay, is is this a, a fantasy, a delusion? Of you know, now he's in a psychosis. True. And it just happened this way because look, I mean, for Cohagen, he was dead quick. Yeah, but for them, it's like oh, it's taken a while. It, it, but that's the great thing about this movie is that you suspend your disbelief because you're having so much fun. You want to believe it. You just accept everything. Yep. And here we have all the glass breaking. That's right. Here, the diehard record breaker is coming up. <laughs> the record break. There it is. <laughs> so the reaction is starting. Here comes atmosphere. And so, I mean, think about it. They're it right there, and they're, now it hits them. Yeah. See, so it's okay. And it's like the purest oxygen ever, so exactly. it, it should work faster, right? <laughs> of course. Here's the lo lost smoke monster. Glass breaking. <laughs> Again, total recall with the lost smoke monster predicting. That is a lot of glass. That That is a ton of glass. Or rock candy or whatever they use. Glass? <laughs> Who gives a shit about glass? <laughs> Come on, give those people we air. Should, they got just the go air. right into Die Hard. <laughs> just roll, keep roll. going all night. <laughs> die and, Hard, Big Trouble Little China, and then Blu-ray. Let's keep it going. Ready to run, Die Hard. <laughs> Look, even the short person hooker is doing the. <laughs> she even gets to have the fun amusement park ride. I'm so Everybody jealous. Gets to me. Everybody's doing this ride. Everybody, I want the. The suck out of the air ride. <laughs> Look, like a thunderstorm already happens. <laughs> it's atmosphere, man. God created the world in seven that is days. That a cool shot, though. Schwarzenegger did it in ten minutes. <laughs> no, one hour and fifty minutes. Yeah. No, that that is a great shot, though. Yeah. Again, it's not uh, it's not CGI, I guess, or well, it. Obviously, is some kind of effects, but it's it looks real enough where you're not thinking, oh, that's fake. I mean, it could just be time lapsed uh, atmosphere shots. That's true. That's true. I did want to quickly say about the Richter thing that I always think of like Darth Maul versus who Qui Gon, uh -huh. and that like Qui -Gon the Qui Gon Jinn, yeah. they're really like see that fight didn't mean anything because right. like Darth Maul isn't set up enough, right? And if you go to like Darth Vader versus Luke. That has a lot of, a lot of stuff behind it. Same thing here with Richter and, and Quaid. You know, there's been a lot yeah. of. So, but again, it comes down to character development. Yeah, and build up in those you know subplot lines. And that's why this movie's so great is that, you know, 
when you see a sci-fi movie, of course you want to see that. It, was that it? neon is a result of the Mars Shocker, by the way. <laughs> you see that little like little blue explosion there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're watching uh, 147 and and almost 148. Here we go. They're watching the neon top. light. And now it's basically a mirror image of the opening sequence, the opening shot. Exactly. We're the dream, but now... But now there's no more glass, and we can all breathe. <laughs> that was what was stopping it, glass. Seriously. <laughs> the moral of this movie, give air to horse. <laughs> <laughs> Break the glass. That's right. <laughs> Even Johns need to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome final open it the final uh pan That's out right. here. Great wide shot. Yep, it's okay. We have air now in Mars. And here's a quick line of dialogue. Yeah. It's like a dream. It's like a dream. Maybe it is. What if it is? Awesome. What if this is a dream? That's how it it went wide and now it's coming in close on them. That's so cool. Right. And now, see, this is why it makes you think that it can be fake. Because just like a movie, you get the girl. It's like Gone with the Wind, and then we do the kiss, and then fade to white. Yeah, now we fade to like the lobotomy white kind of thing. And the great right. music. Love the, I love the score here. We didn't we weren't listening to this with the sound on, but the score is really cool, too. No, definitely. Really just nice as power kind of dun, 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 dun. <laughs> great. Great characters. And everything just comes together here really well. Yeah. The music... The directing. What other trivia we can do here? Uh, so, what producer Mario Kesar? I think uh, from I think doing a little bit of research, he's like a hardcore pinball fan. Really? Yeah, I didn't know. That. Well, because you're you're a pinball aficionado. I try to be. You and, are. Uh, Give yourself some credit. All right, all right, all right. Decent at it. And because uh, I guess I think he did production with uh, Indiana Jones as well, uh-huh. if possible. And so I think he has like uh, one of the top and. Uh, Indiana Jones pinball machine signed by Indian or no Harrison Ford by Harrison Ford yeah nice I, about that. I guess he has an extensive collection as well of pinball machines okay yeah cause I actually in the, back in college I actually wrote a paper about um it was like T2 uh-huh. and so he produced he was a producer of um uh, Rambo 3 mm-hmm. and I think at that time he had paid for, uh, Stallone the most ever for any actor it was like 18 million or something okay and then he produced this with the, with his company. And then he also produced T2. And at that time, he paid Schwarzenegger the first $20 million actor at that time. Right. In but then they also gave him that uh, Desert Storm, like, tank. Was it the, the Humvee? Oh. It's like, desert, like, I heard, like, Cameron got a Desert Storm Humvee for him. Okay. To, like, like sweeten the deal, whatever you want to nice. call it. Nice. Yeah, I do remember, like, that Schwarzenegger was one of the first people to... To have the Humvee. A Humvee is like a rec- yeah. recreational car. Use it. So there it is. Total Recall. That's right. And Let's give it out to Transportation Co-Captain Jesus Martinez. Jesus Martinez. Need Big some props. Much. And Eric. Much love. Much love. Eric Brevig, <laughs> Visual Effects Supervisor. <laughs> Dream Quest. Dream Quest Images. Not Vision Quest. Not Vision. <laughs> These are the people... You know, I, I don't know about you, but do you stick around for the credits in the movie, or do you usually... I know you do. I, I do. But, dude, the lights go on, I'm out. You're done? I'm out, man. Well, especially nowadays, you kind of have to, because they might always do like that little thing at the end. Right. That's the only reason to keep people around. Yeah. Because what do you do? You leave. But I was kind of like a geek. I just kind of hung around to the end anyways. That's right. Rob Botton, that guy's kind of a well-known mm-hmm. effects editor. Yeah. So. And ILM doing the other special effects, so... Very nice. Coming with it on this. So it's really going to hurt if this remake becomes a reality. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm already kind of... I'm totally on the fence on the Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Because, again, us being pretty pretty big horror fans. Freddy fans, particularly. Huge Freddy fans. And, of course, I, you know, I love to watch when I love Rorschach. I hope he can do well with Freddy. I don't know if he's... Hopefully he's going to, like, lose some of the comedy stuff. Right. You know? Because I don't know if he could do that part. Yeah. I don't know if he was Kelly Leak and Big Bad News Bears. We'll see. 
I don't Play know. Play the Nintendo game from Acclaim Entertainment. Oh, that now that's the sign of the times right that's there. That's right. 1990, get the Nintendo game. Which has to be horrible. I mean, a Total Recall Nintendo remember. game. I'm sure a video game nerd has it. Yeah. Uh, that'd be Go a good one to check out. out. But I, I kind of have this fear that the only place... Let's just quickly close out with like... Yeah. If this is going to be a remake, where... Okay, other than the special effects... What could you imagine that could you be done? You can't touch it. You can't touch the plot. It's pretty much rock solid. Yeah. I have a fear, though, that they would go darker and grittier. Right. Because this is, I mean, this is, you know, kind of, it's not like um, slapsticky by any means, but it's very, you know, it's very light in terms of, like, even though you have, like, the mutants and kind of the whorehouse and all that and True. super blood and violence, you almost get the sense that they'll just, like, Make it like seven or something. It'll be really dirty <laughs> and really grimy. Right. But know. that's the whole thing. Like Michael Bay when he does his his remake. Yeah. What does he do? You just turn down the brightness, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's Chainsaw Massacre, dude. Turn down the brightness. Turn down the brightness. And get a strobe light. <laughs> that's all you gotta do. And then you just remake every horror movie possible. And just close your eyes and edit every four seconds, <laughs> no matter what just it chop, is. Chop, 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 just, chop. Just keep chopping. Yeah. You know, because like with this Robin Hood and all that, like to just oh, add right. the hardcore music. Make it hard, you know, yeah. Just make it exactly. rougher. Yeah. So imagine it'll be like Saw and Hostile, and seriously, it's like take your high definition television and turn it from natural to you know like cult, what is it, movie or whatever. Movie, yeah, and it'll just we'll see. So more than likely, the story will be the same. That's right. But they'll just uh, make it darker. I don't know. It's, yeah. Uh, but again, Total Recall, it'll one be of our Kira favorite Knightley movies. instead of Sharon Stone. Kira Knightley. Yeah, well, I'm calling it right now. And uh, who knows? I don't even want to think about it, but definitely gets my vote for a movie that should not be touched. Never touched. It's totally classic. Kevin Costner, untouchable. Ke- Kevin Costner, untouchable. <laughs> <laughs> Just the movie, not him. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's All right. it. That's it, man. Thanks for hanging. No problem. Uncle C, thanks for Peace joining. Peace out, and... Internet. Peace out, Internet. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave some comments and thoughts. This was, again, the first... Movie night with a co movie nighter with a co analyst analyzer. So look forward to hearing your thoughts and until next time, long live good movies. <laughs>